uh, app world has just exploded. So there's, I think, last I heard, like maybe 500,000 apps. I can't days. even keep track anymore. Um, I think, you know, I mean, I think one, uh, someone asked uh, Reed Hoffman once, I think, like, what was the best thing, what was the smartest thing I ever did with LinkedIn? He said, I launched in 2002. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think one could argue that uh, part of your success and a lot of app success is when they launch, especially launching early. Mm -hmm. If you're launching today, it might be tougher just to get, there's so much noise. Oh, I mean, you can have the greatest certainly. thing in the world. Um, and I'm not, I don't believe that the current, like say on the iPhone app store, the discovery process is particularly good. Like right. a lot of, the, I think like I play a lot of games, some of the best games aren't in the top 25. Right. They aren't recommended by Genius, you know. Um, so it doesn't feel like, you know, and, and a lot of the sort of, on the desktop web there's, I think, you know, there's sort of, as you said, like a recipe kind of for, you know, how to go and market your product where people are still figuring it out on the mobile web. Yeah, um, I think so. I, I think those recipes will evolve and, and there will be a cookbook of how you do it on mobile soon. Mm -hmm. But it's still, I mean, it's only three years in on mobile. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty early. I mean, do you think, uh, like, what are some of the things you've learned? If you were launching an app today, um, you know, what would you, what are some of the lessons you've learned? I think it depends on what type of app you're building. So if you're building an app that you really need kind of like social credibility, like having people talk about it and it being the hot thing, then yeah, maybe it makes sense for you to go target a few influence, influencers um, and get them to you know, tweet about it and talk about it. Um, if you're building a product for normal people like we are, uh, what really matters is just getting normal people to use the product, like it, and then tell their friends about it. Mm -hmm. So we don't really worry about being up on the charts. We, we're lucky enough to always be up on the charts, but we don't spend <coughs> a lot of time worrying about that because it doesn't really matter. If that's the only way that people are dis you know, discovering your product, then you should work on the product, not your distribution mm -hmm. strategy. So basically your advice is to just make a product that... I mean, it's the YC are... adage, build something people want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that, uh, I mean, but at some point, like, if the whole thing gets just so overfunded, um, you know, I mean, I, there can only be so many photo sharing apps, right? I mean, like, it doesn't it seem at some point like it might be a bit of an app bubble? Uh, yes. I guess. I mean, maybe there will be 500 different photo sharing apps, but one or two of them will emerge as the winners. Yeah. And maybe the third or fourth one was actually better, um, but, you know, it's still pretty good, I think. Yeah. Um, and are there, what do you think of these things like, there's a, a whole sort of like, I don't know what you call black hat industry of like the people buying their way mm -hmm. up to these, I mean, I assume you guys don't, don't do any of that. Yeah, we've never done that, and so I don't know a whole lot about mechanically how it works. Yeah, um, but the idea is basically you buy your way into your the top list, and then you, by being there, um, you, you then get more yeah. organic. If you have problems. if you have a organic you know, distribution engine that will work, then that can be really great for you. Pops you up, and then that engine just gets you know, started in full gear. And that's kind of what happened for us. We had mm -hmm. this engine, we didn't know it, um, and then we were the billionth app, Apple featured us in an, in an international TV commercial, which you know cranked that engine up into high gear, and then it just kept going on yeah. its own, and it has for two years now. What so, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. so I think that's, if you have that type of product, or you think you do, um, then maybe it does make sense to try to pop your way up for a bit and get things started, and then have it continue. Mm -hmm. But for most apps, that won't work. What are your favorite mobile apps right now? My favorite mobile apps? Let me look at what's on my phone. Or what or what's like, like trends? Um, I, I really like real-time information. So I've got my Twitter feed, I've got Facebook. Those are the ones that I open the most mm -hmm. um, because this thing's always with me. And so no matter where I am in the world or what I'm doing, I'm always kind of connected to the things I care about. Mm -hmm. um, I use the MLB at bat app to watch my Texas Rangers mm -hmm. play in the mm -hmm. last two World Series and lose. Um, Do you think there will be um, uh, a sort of a new giant companies created that are strictly mobile? Like one of the, you know, questions a lot of like say investors talk about is what could be the next big new thing mm -hmm. that's you know Facebook level scale right. or whatever right. um, and and that can usurp it or something and I don't know if it's a Foursquare bump or whatever it might be but um, I certainly think that the next wave of really important companies will be mobile first yeah. uh, because mobile is going to be the market yeah. in the next five years. I think I heard... Fred, Fred Wilson has a nice phrase, or maybe I don't know if he coined it, but sort of, mo yeah, exactly that, mobile for, like, as to whether... Because yeah. everyone now has, like, a mobile app, but the question is, are you primarily mobile? Like, yeah, Foursquare is clearly primarily... Instagram doesn't even difference. have a web presence, barely. Yeah. I mean, right? I mean, like... Um, right. I think Ram Sharam recently, he's one of our investors, he recently talked about there are five billion, roughly, phones in the world now, mm -hmm. and in the next five years, the vast majority of those phones will transition to smartphones as Android gets cheaper, as iOS you know, becomes more prevalent. And 
we say that number, five billion, it's like, oh, five billion. But that is the biggest market that will ever have existed, ever, mm -hmm. in the history of humanity. Mm -hmm. And way bigger than the web. I mean, 10 years ago when the web was hot, there were 50 million people on the web, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, there's gonna be five billion people that have access to this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that scale is just, I mean, I have trouble wrapping my head around that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens. Um, so let's talk about, uh, so there's a lot of talk about how hard it is to hire, uh, especially really good engineers uh, in California. Like I've heard these stories, like Google will offer people 400 grand or mm -hmm. something, and there's no way a startup can compete with that. Like how have you found right. it to be? For us, hiring's not been super hard. Um, it turns out that the people you really wanna hire tend to find you. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had lots of people, our, our, some of our best folks, um, just found us, like heard about us and said, oh, that's interesting, I can see what they want to do, and uh, come to us. Um, that's because you're a high-profile consumer company, right? right? I mean, so you tend to be, I mean, if you're infrastructure... It certainly helps, about, yeah. yes, it certainly helps. Yeah. And, and the fact that people actually use our product, yeah. you know, that helps a lot, too. So a lot of the people that come to you are people that are act, a, avid users. Yeah, or, they, or they, they used it and they saw the vision of what it could be, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't see. Mm -hmm. So you haven't found you app. haven't found that to be a, sort of the these these competitive challenges with Facebook and Google hiring to be a big issue, right? It, certainly, there have been some people that we've wanted to hire that went and took jobs there. Uh, I think it turns out that the people you really want to hire aren't interested in going to Google and getting paid a lot more. They want to work in a startup. They want to do something where they can have a big impact. Um, and every one of our people, we have thirty people. Each one of them has a big impact on what this product is going to look like, yeah. and. It gets sent out to 60 million people every time we do an update. Yeah, I think it was Joel Spolsky who said something like, uh, as a startup, you just need to offer a different product. Like, you just, yeah. it's a totally different thing that it's you're It's not compensation, yeah. cash compensation, yeah. it's equity, and it's the chance to have a yeah. big impact on the world. Yeah, yeah. it's totally different. Um, and uh, in terms of advice, so, um, you know, you, you didn't come up with a big business plan or whatever, you just sort of built something. Um, can you kind of talk about your views on that? Yeah, we backed into this kind of. We, we built a product that we wanted to exist in the world, and it turns out we could make a company about, around it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, having the idea for Bump during business school, um, you know, I was involved in the entrepreneurship community at the school, and a lot of my classmates there were sitting in a room creating their business plan so they could present it at the business plan competition. And I see so many really smart people that could build really great stuff just get stuck in this analysis paralysis where they say, oh, this isn't going to work for this reason or that market's too small. If we had done that for Bump, we would have said, oh, there's no way it's going to work because it's a network effect product. You need two people to have it. There's no way it's ever going to work. And we yeah. maybe wouldn't have done it. Um, but instead, we were bored at business school and we thought, well, let's just build it and see what happens mm -hmm. and took off. Yeah. So yeah, that, stop, stop thinking and just go build it. Um, another thing, uh, I, you know, I think some people divide up the world between kind of like techies and uh, and normals, as some, mm -hmm. some of us say. Um, yeah. Normals being uh, not people like you and me who do this stuff all day. Right. Um, and you you seem like a your you your product is uh, targeted towards normals. It certainly is. Uh, you know, we want we wanted to build something that normal people cared about because normal people, by the definition of the word, are the mo majority of people in the world, mm -hmm. and we wanted to have an impact. Um, so every decision we make is based on would a normal person, would a, would a soccer mom in Kansas be able to understand this feature? Mm -hmm. And will she tell her friends about it? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, we, like, we won't build it mm -hmm. or we'll change how it looks. Um, so I think it's really important. I see so many people in Silicon Valley you know, building a product that's great for Silicon Valley. And maybe, mm -hmm. that's, maybe that works for some companies, but we wanted to have a broad impact on the whole world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, I think I guess the ideal thing is, let's say you're Google where you, meaning the original search engine mm -hmm. product where you are both, it's both techies and normals love it, right? Right. Um, but actually the next best thing is to be a product loved by normals and not techies, right? Because it's a as huge market. You and if you look at most, yeah, yeah. most successful companies, well, a lot of them actually, if you look at it, like, you know, a Netflix, for example, oh, they, yeah. they're a product targeting normals and they, they bought most, most of their, there's mostly a paid customer acquisition strategy, right? So sure. that's sort of, if you look at 95% of businesses in the world, they're target normals and they, they pay to get their customers. Right, and if you can do that, if your economics work where you can yeah. do that, that's great. Yeah. yeah. But I think I, I see too many people stressing out about whether like this blogger cares about their product or, or this influencer, and what you really should care about is like, do normal people care about it? Yeah. And do they tell their friends about it? Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, well thanks for being here. Great, thank you.